<laughs> oh. <laughs> Hey there, neighbor. <laughs> no, hey, neighbors. What is going on? You are tuned into episode seven. It has been a long time coming, guys. And seven is such a good number, okay? Good like, luck. yeah, yeah. It's like good luck, you know. Yes. And again, guys, we are just so excited to have you here. Thank you all so much for your continued support and tuning in. And I want to uh, welcome my guest here again, okay? Ray Viana. Hey, girl. Hey, what's Ray. going on? <laughs> no, but again, I have Mimi from last episode. You guys may have remembered her. You loved her so much. We had to bring her back. What's Thank going on, Mimi? Thank you for Mimi? having me. Thank you so much for coming. I'm so enjoying my time in the neighborhood. Yes, I, <laughs> I love okay. her. <laughs> I love her. You look good. Thank Your you. nails look good. Your hair looks good. Thank Skin you. looks good. Everything. Look, hair, I have to thank you for. No, thank you. You definitely did help uh, like a sister. Okay, you know, yes. I do it all, y'all. Make sure booking info and bio. Yes. And <laughs> Nicole is looking good. I helped Thank her out you. too, because clearly, you know, that first episode, she had, she had the runner's hair and stuff. You gonna run that up every time? Yeah, because, every time. <laughs> because the glow up is getting better and okay, better. Better and better. Okay. Every time. Okay. Hello. <laughs> so Nicole, <laughs> since you're here and you are the expert, why don't you tell the people what they missed in episode six? Sure. So episode six, we did a lot. We ran over Tristential's exfoliating scrub, which we all learned like a whole bunch yes. of tea off of that we didn't know. Uh, we also went over braid styles, which uh, Braviana is definitely rocking today. Yeah, you look good. <laughs> yes. And Michelle and Mimi also did the strip lashes. They taught you how to apply those and lay those baby hairs. Um, shout out to Bella De Naomi who uh, sent us her YouTube video. Um, and then we lastly went behind the scenes at BeautyCon um, at Sensational and had fun with that. And oh, cannot forget, we also brought. Belon, a yes. viewer, and went over bits of clay mask. Yes. Um, so yes. So much fun our last episode yes and nicole is the one that did the behind the scenes uh for the uh beauty con event with sensation also make sure you check that video out it's very good very informative nicole does not like being on camera that much and i try to promote her as much because it's like, yeah, she's beautiful <laughs> she's awesome. and she's so knowledgeable yeah so knowledgeable we have another behind the scenes to this episode so Ooh, Ooh, yeah. yeah so this episode is going to be super exciting we have a lot of fun things going on but before we jump right into it, I just want to tell you guys thank you again. I cannot thank you enough. However, however, we want to make sure that we continue to flourish and give you guys the knowledgeable, um, more than knowledgeable and a wealth of information that we've been able to share with you about the inside tricks and tips of the beauty industry. So make sure that you like, comment, subscribe and share with your friends okay make sure you share and maybe next time you can be a guest on one of our next episodes so let's get into my favorite segment y'all already know what it is yeah right hail or fail. fail okay and if you guys don't know about hail or fail we give you three looks every week if you like it it's a hail and if you don't it's a fail okay this week is going to be battle of the bushes Met Gala edition. Ooh, okay, that is good. Are we yes. ready? Uh, I think we're ready. I'm ready okay, for these looks. Nicole, cue up the looks. Uh. All right. So first we have Yara Shahidi, and this is her bush. It's a bush. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> it's a bird's nest more than a bush. Um, I think <laughs> I, I don't know. It just wasn't executed. Properly, I don't know what's yeah. going on with it. Um, that's what I look like um, when I've been sick for a week and mm -hmm. I just don't want to comb my hair. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's what my bush looks like. But we have to say the theme of Met Gala this year was camp. So yeah, it's larger than life, over exaggerated. Um, it still wasn't done well though. It, it, it camp, wasn't. camp is not necessarily tacky, and right. I think that's where a lot of people failed. Right. You know. Her bush is not the best, I would agree. Um, I'm gonna have to give it a fail, only because um, it looks like a wig, honestly. That, well, of course that cannot be her hair. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the wig is not just like, it looks like something you got from like an attic, no offense. Yeah. And you just like dust it off and was like, oh, this is camp. No, like, right, right, right. This on. So no, I, I give it a fail. Too. Okay. It's a definite fail for me. Um, and primarily really because of the bang. 
Yeah. It's the Beyonce bag. The Beyonce bag. <laughs> before, oh, no. before we got it together, that is what she was giving. Oh. And that's really what stresses me out the most. I mean, <laughs> it's stressing you out. It really is. I just like, I want to take uh, a comb and just cut it a little bit more. Or maybe, you know, right. even if we could have gelled it up with the rest of the nest that's happening at the top. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm concerned. I am so concerned about it. But we love you, girl. We yeah, love you. We love you, girl. And her natural yeah. curls is, is are, are everything. Always she should have wore her natural bush, yeah. honestly. Usually yeah. she does. But yeah, her yeah. natural her yeah. hair is beautiful. We're going to chop it up to camp. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next one. So we have Sierra. Ooh. Of course. Yes. Giving you layers and layers of bush. So what do you think? This is a hell for me, girl. I mean, all day long. Let me lay in that bush. Mm -hmm. What can I find in that bush? What can I hide in that bush? I would have had some snacks Hello, in that right. bush. Okay. Yes. <laughs> she looks amazing. Yes. Right. What um, it's a definite hail for me. It is a halo, which is what I think about when Ooh. I think of an afro. And it's camp. It's still camp. I'm yeah. like Yara. She got the camp feel without the bird's nest. Mm -hmm. right. um, I really love it. Hail all the way. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, actually, her hairstylist, uh, Daniel Caesar. Um, oh, Caesar. Oh, I'm like, oh, think about Daniel, it. Daniel, Daniel is a, a hair oh, career as well. Oh, my God. He <laughs> did hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his name is Caesar. I forgot okay. his name. I'm sorry. I was listening to Daniel Caesar this morning. That's I think great. that's where it came from. But he does our hair, and he's amazing. We actually interviewed him um, for Cosmo Biz. Oh, he's awesome. amazing. He does his hair. Uh, he does our hair faithfully. Yeah, I love the look. I love like the slick down baby hair, the natural yeah. hair. It's yeah. like so good. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. It's Sierra too. She yeah, can, like, yeah. yeah. I wonder how they got because it's so large. How did they get it to stay? You know, like. What was that process? Well, like? I know I he up. creates his own wigs too, mm -hmm. so um, he has his own wig line. So that's probably like in the process of you know creating clips and, yeah. and and really putting that down. So that has to be mostly in the back of the hair where they did it at. Yeah. yeah. And um, I don't think her natural hair is too long because that is her natural hair in the front. Yeah. Um. So. Well, she did just post a video on IG. Her hair is pretty long. Yeah, it is it, pretty so, long. Yeah. Um. It, you definitely can hide it under that thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, they probably have put some clips, bobby pins, everything. In yeah, there. It's, it's gorgeous. Stuff. It looks great. Yeah. All right, so here's our last one. We have Nikita. Uh, we have yes. a front and a back picture. Okay. So this yeah, because you need to get yeah. The stars get are that. in the back, and then the lock power combs are yes. in the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think? Hail. It's a definite hail. I mean, this is what Yara wanted her fro to do at the top, and she mm -hmm. missed uh, the mark just a little. But mm -hmm. particularly with the Black Power Fist combs, it's a major hail for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about you? I like it. I think the eyeshadow is distracting me from the hair. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Um, the eyeshadow is just, like, giving me very... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say the wrong word. It's giving me very queen. I don't like. I don't like the eyeshadow too much. Mm. But the hair, though, I like. I, I really do like. But the, I think the eyeshadow is just distracting me from liking the hair too much. It's mm. camp. It is. It is. No, I do. Camp. It's very camp. It is very camp. And I love. Don't get me wrong. I love the 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 fro. Um, it's just the eyeshadow. I don't like with it. I don't. Mm. I don't think the makeup complements the hair to me. Okay. I think because we're just looking at the hair, but the exactly. whole look. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, the it whole look the is whole just. Look. But the hair is definitely a fail. I mean, yeah. A, a hail. Sorry. Yeah. How, how do you really <laughs> feel in the color? Oh, no. <laughs> You can never get black hand no. to hell. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's definitely a hell. I mean, I don't really even have anything to say. It's just a hell to it's me. A, it's a hell sure. across the board. The mm -hmm. back, the front, the everything. I, I actually want to wear that right now. Yes. Right. Yes. Thank you, Lupita. Yes. Thank you for yes. representing. Yes. Okay, so guys, give us your opinion. Let us know what you think, okay? Were you guys filling your eyes wig? Eh, we don't know, okay? And Sierra, would you wear that? Let us know if you like it. Make sure you comment below, and we want to know. We want to hear, okay? And make sure you stay tuned for our next segment. Hey guys, welcome back to Behind the Scenes. For this month, we are taking you into the world of microlinks. 
Now some of you may have heard of this with Caucasian hair, but we found a hairstylist in the DMV area who was doing microlinks for black hair. So of course we went behind the scenes to see how she does it, how long it takes, and how you can do it too. Stay tuned and you'll find out. Called eye tip microlink um, extensions. These are like pop, most popular method of hair extensions for clients that want to have a natural look without, um, you know, going under wigs or full weaves. And these are popular method of hair extensions that are coming, taking back over. They were out years ago, but now they're becoming more of a rave because they are reaching out to a more diverse audience. Now, back in the day, you can only get dye tips for like Caucasian and Asian and now they're becoming a lot more popular now because we have different textures that are available. So here we go. So you're gonna put it yeah push it up. Make sure you push it up with your finger. All the way up right. There we go. And then your tool, here we go. Yeah. And these are the ones you created yourself, right? Well we were making some by hand. These were actually pre ordered so these were pre made but these are all hand handmade yeah yeah and then they're, they're attached with a small micro ring this is a micro bead mm -hmm. with a keratin infused um a cushion that protects the hair so that the hair isn't damaged these extensions stay in sometimes anywhere from three to six months mm -hmm. so um it's a very lightweight method and um very safe method so again, so they can keep it in for about like um, three months. After 10 weeks, you're gonna have your client come back and I'm gonna show you how we do um, maintenance. So you're gonna open the ring, push it up, and then clamp it back down. I'm gonna show you how to do that. But you just definitely wanna tell someone that they have to come back for after at least about 10 weeks because the weight of the extension, the ring, and the new growth might be a lot of stress on the hair. So you wanna make sure they come back and get their hair properly maintenance. But they treat it like their own, they shampoo it, they, um, you know, do everything that they normally would do, flat iron, curl, all the above. If they swim, you want to make sure that they um, either put their hair in two braids, they don't go to sleep with their extensions wet. At least they need to um, blow dry or finger finger dry with the blow dry. Don't go to sleep with them. Right. So the, we're instance that we have someone that has a specialized texture that we just can't get our hands on. We'll just cut it off of the weft it off the left and we're going to use a small amount of glue this is the same glue they use in the process of um, infusion actually so infusion is very similar to micro link but they are done with instead of the micro bead you use glue and then they they put it on at the, the base of the hair yeah at the root of the hair so we're going to add two pieces of glue even. I'm a lefty. Yep. And then we're gonna just make it a little tacky. Go in. And let's smash it. And this is how we're binding it. Don't 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 laugh at my nails, guys. My nail appointment's at <laughs> seven o'clock today. Then we go in. And then we clean it up. And then this is your eye tip. That's your eye tip, yep. So, and then you wanna make sure that you keep like one of your, I keep one of my, this is the micro bead. So you keep one of those just to measure, just to make sure it's not too thick. So this one, yep, it passed. So there we go. Remember to pull it down, yep, this looks good, perfect. So you see how the texture, you know, when it grows, this texture matches this hair, so this hair will, everything is gonna fall into place. And usually your natural hair and the crown will cover the length, so none of this will be vis visible. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, um, depending on the hair texture, these um, could stay in up to six months as long as they're maintained properly. I've um, seen people keep them in longer, eight months, 10 months. But you know, you have to come in and get them, they open them up at the length, I'll show you how that we do this we open it up after about um yeah about two months or so open it up let me see your tool so after you um before you shampoo your client's hair you want to go in this is before this is, they've, it's been two months now you're going to take all of their links you're going to open it up with the same tool 
mind you, the hair is going to be grown. So we're going to pretend that this is where it was. Mm -hmm. We open it up because this is where, when they come in, this is how it's going to look. This is how it's going to look in two months. So you're going to open it up with the tool slightly. You're going to push it all the way up to the root. You're going to clean it. shampoo after before you shampoo. Okay. You're gonna clean out all the soot because it's gonna be build up and it's gonna be loose hair because you know the hair is supposed to strand, um, shed 100 strand, strands a day. So you are gonna have some shedding, but it's not, it's minimal and it's normal. Then you go back in, you insert the eye tip and then you clamp it down. And this is maintenance. Thank you, Jemistry, so much for showing us how to do microlinks. If you have any questions or if you want to follow her or if you are interested in being in our next behind the scenes, make sure you follow us and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you back. Hey, neighbors. So we are back for our second segment, and we have Travis joining us now. You missed Hail or Fail. It was a good one, and I would have good. loved to have heard your input on it because you're really good okay. at honest feedback. So... With that being said, we have Second Nature here, and we would love your honest feedback on their hemp and CBD oil, CBD oil that is now getting ready to hit the market. Yeah, actually, uh, I've been studying about the hemp and CBD lately, mm -hmm. um, heavily. Okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, before I, I say anything about you know hemp oil mm -hmm. or CBD oil, what do you know about hemp? Or when you what comes to my your mind when I say when you say it? Hemp oil. To be that. honest, so definitely weed comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do know a little bit about hemp, that it is from a plant, and I know that it, hemp can be used to make different things. Like yeah. I've seen hemp bags and hemp paper and I, things like that. A hemp car. I saw a guy make... Um, a hemp car? Yeah, wow. make a car out of hemp. It's like really... Depending on how you manipulate the product or something, right. like it can be very strong. Correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's all. I, I don't know much about it. I when I think of hemp, though, hemp in weed doesn't like align with me, but CBD in weed kind of uh, like kind of yeah, yeah aligns to me. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah, actually, that's true. I think you got it, you got you got it right. Okay. Um, most common misunderstanding when it comes to hemp and CBD or marijuana is they're, they're thinking it's all the same thing mm -hmm. because we call marijuana joint or weed or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. like there are so many different names for yeah, it, right? Yeah. Just like because of that, maybe uh, a lot of people think it's hemp and the, 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 the marijuana is the mm -hmm. same same thing that they are talking about, mm -hmm. but it's not. They are totally different yeah. okay. uh, species. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, in physically, it's like hemp is very tall, like six to seven feet tall. Oh wow! It's okay. kind of you know like leaves are like stringy. It's not oh, as rich. So it's totally like, different look right. to it and everything. Right. But wow. the, the marijuana plant is shorter. Yeah. And you know the, it has uh, lots of leaves on yeah. it. Mm. Yeah. So very okay. rich looking. Yeah. But the hemp it looks. Kind of poor, <laughs> compar in comparison. Oh, wow. wow! So it's 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 cannabis, uh, you know, plant, a family, mm -hmm. but uh, similar. It has a lot of similar characteristics to it. Okay. But um, the main difference is that the hemp doesn't have THC, mm -hmm. and um, you know it has a little bit, mm -hmm. but it has like less than zero point three percent. Oh wow! Of okay. CBD contents okay. in it. The C THC is is um, is what it is. Is that it's a it's that's the, the psychoactive property, right? Correct, psychoactive yeah. property Ooh. that sort of makes you high. Psychoactive <laughs> property. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, Michelle, that's, we're gonna watch you around all the okay. time. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I just I'm I'm a, uh, I love good you know verbiage and oh, verb usage. Oh well, thank you, thank oh, you. Okay. Tense me out. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So actually, uh, it has a you know very little THC level in hemp, mm -hmm. and whereas the um, the marijuana plant has uh, you know like twenty percent or thirty percent THC mm -hmm. uh, in it. So um, uh, it's basically a totally different thing. So what are some of the benefits? Because this, uh, for instance, this bottle says for hair and skin. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the benefits of the hemp seed that would benefit our hair and our skin? Okay. Well, actually, the hemp has the benefit of its own. It's mm. different characteristics of the benefits it brings. Okay. 
the CBD offers a different type of benefits. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, CBD uh, offers a lot of uh, benefits related to your mood or your, mm -hmm. I, I believe it is like brain related yeah. issues. Mm -hmm. it, it anti anxiety. Sort of, right, anti anxiety, depression, depression, depression yeah. issues, Got it. sleep okay. problem, or, you know, like, uh, because nowadays with us, uh, you know, handphone and cell, you know, we can't turn off ourselves. Right. Yeah. yeah. Our mind is rushing, and yeah. then we can't just turn it off so mm -hmm. easily, right? Mm -hmm. So even before you fall asleep, you still have to listen to something in order for you to fall asleep. Mm. And and we we really need to turn you know turn off our brain, yeah, mm -hmm. while, yeah. so that we can rest. Yeah. Um, and then otherwise we will create this anxiety and uh, mood swing and all that other stuff that's mm -hmm. going to I impact our lives. Mm -hmm. So. We need to actually adjust that, but uh, um, so I think we need more. This generation, we need more of uh, more of the substance that actually calms us down or turn mm -hmm. off our yeah. thought process yeah. than ever before in the past. Yeah. So actually, in that sense, I think the CBD has a great value to it. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the hemp, um, the hemp has a lot of benefits that relates to like skin. Mm -hmm or the skin or hair. Yeah. Wow. You know, obviously it has so many different varieties of the, uh, the, the benefits. You know, mm -hmm. it helps uh, like um, internally the heart for heart disease is great. Mm -hmm. and there are so many other benefits, but among them all, I think, you know, yeah. if I can just highlight one, then it's probably the skin or hair related benefit mm -hmm. would be the strongest on hemp. Okay. Does it like clear the skin or make it look younger? What What do you mean? Um, inflammation is the biggest thing. Yeah. Inflammation is probably like the majority, one of the possibly the biggest you know cause of uh, illness mm -hmm. nowadays, mm -hmm. internally or externally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, um, controlling in, in inflammation, I think, is uh, yeah. one of the great benefits of the hemp. Yeah. So and, um, I recently, there's a company, Hips? Hmm? Well. No, no, no. Um, gosh, I can't think of the name. They do like the gel that everybody uses. What's the green Eco Styler. Eco Styler. Styler. Yeah. I saw They that. have a brand new CBD gel. I right? did mm -hmm. see that, yeah. What is the benefit of putting it in gel? What does that do for your hair? Funny that you asked me that question because that's really um, important question that not many people really pay attention to. Mm -hmm. When we, for some reason, if we orally take something, mm -hmm. then we feel like we are really directly putting that in our body. Right. Right? Whereas when you apply something on the skin, mm -hmm. it feels like it's a far away from your skin yeah. body. Right? Yeah. But in reality, each substance or each component act, reacts differently inside our body and digestive system. Yeah. But in commonly speaking, not everything that you eat is digested in your body. Right. Mm -hmm. Most of it goes through our you know digestive systems and go to the toilet. Yeah. yeah. And so, what percentage of let's say you took a hemp oil or hemp, hemp seed oil or mm -hmm. CBD oil, if you digest it in in oral in orally. And what percentage do you think will be observed by the body? Mm -hmm. And then what percentage of that will be that, you know, goes out uh, yeah. through the toilet, toilet? Right. Usually they said 85% of the, co the, the contents that we eat will probably waste it. Oh, wow. But when you apply the hemp oil or CBD oil on the skin, where is it going to go? Mm -hmm. Directly, Directly to the place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It doesn't go to go to straight to the toilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, okay. but it has to go through our bloodstream and then it has to be go through our liver and kidney and then maybe, you know, go out uh, through urine or whatever case yeah. maybe. But, it, but the, the whole point is that it goes through our body first before mm. it got wasted, right? Mm -hmm. So when I put this on something that is inflamed like my knee mm -hmm. or... I hurt my arm and I can put it on that as well. Or right. even if my scalp feels like it has had some sort of damage, it'll work for that. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I th uh, but another mistake, common mistake people make is, you know, whenever you somebody says, oh, black castor oil is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? When people say that, then everybody just rush onto it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's what I was going to ask about the eco style. Like, is it a Is trend? it even a good? Or right. Like, well, mm-hmm. I haven't seen a lot of people using it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so. Uh, you know, so, like, <laughs> well, you know, before CBD, there are something very similar to CBD already mm-hmm. out there in the market. Do you know what that is? No. Lavender. <laughs> oh, <laughs> everything. Everyone put lavender in everything right. a while ago. I love lavender. Yeah. I love lavender. Lavender has a, you know, similar components or substance that calms your brain mm. down. Yes. Really? Frankincense. Yeah. yeah. Also has this, you know, it has the substance that has wow. that uh, functionality. Wow. It's, okay. it's close to close to CBD. Mm-hmm. So we already had these substances. And the thing is, when something comes out, everybody is like, uh, let's say, uh, you know, I said, you know, mm-hmm. I, t- I choose the black castor oil as a sample, so let me just continue with that. Yeah. Somebody says, oh, black castor oil is great. Yeah, if you ask me, I will say, yes, it is awesome. It is the greatest thing. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, <laughs> when it's commercialized, how true are you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or it's like, if you ask, scientifically asking, like I cannot say anything bad about it because it's, it has a great value. Mm-hmm. Right. A, you know, anything and everything has great value, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But then again, uh, so it has great value. But then, you know, th- does it mean that it actually will do the miracle? No, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. So why second nature? What sets second nature apart from a different CBD oil that I could get somewhere else? Uh, second nature, I think I like second nature, mm-hmm. and then I keep bringing on the second nature products mm-hmm. because there are a lot of companies out there, but that I don't know that I can really vouch for. Yeah. Uh, are they really just out there for money? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then yeah. you know, are they really truthful about their ingredients? Mm-hmm. I don't know, but uh, there are certain companies that sort of like lives lives up to their. Uh, statements yeah mm-hmm. and also th- that's why they are like received by the retail store retail owners yeah and with the confidence that their yeah. product will do okay mm-hmm. and so on so forth and that's why I you know I trust and I follow and then I think uh, that's where the core value is y- I- any any company actually uh, especially when you try when somebody actually mentions, that oh yes, I um, we have the hemp hemp contents in uh, this gel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell you the truth, I don't really trust that very yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. How do I know how many drops drops of hemp seed oil in yeah. the one right. big tub of right. the thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what, that's that's yeah, what, how I felt about eco. I yeah, like, like I don't see the difference mm-hmm. that it's doing for me. Um, it's not actually holding my hair the way the other gel does. Oh, so but you purchased it? I, I do have yeah. it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I was actually given the product to try Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't see the difference and then I felt like they were jumping on a trend Mm -hmm. and not really adding any benefit to yeah Yeah. I'm seeing CBD oil at places like CVS now Mm -hmm. and we do live in a place where it is legal Mm -hmm. but I'm wondering if I can even trust it at a place like CVS even though it's a pharmacy Mm -hmm. the question becomes are you guys just hopping in on the trend and not right. really being honest yeah. with your ingredients or not? Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to CBD or hemp seed oil, I would feel very comfortable with a company or brand that you can actually trust, mm-hmm. first of all. Mm-hmm. Uh, second is if you can't trust, then I would probably just buy the hemp seed oil by itself mm-hmm. and then cocktail it with the gel that I like, mm-hmm. or hair lotions, or you know lotions mm-hmm. that I like, mm-hmm. and because then I will know how exactly how much of hemp seed oil that I am actually adding onto my yeah. product. Smart, yeah, you that's know? really smart. So if I was to do maybe like a little tube of lotion, how many drops of hemp seed oil would you recommend? Actually, uh, the hemp seed oil, uh, there is no limitations to the hemp seed oil. Okay, you can actually use the full strength as as it is. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. It's that safe. Okay. Um, awesome. The stronger the stronger the concentration is better. Okay. When it comes to hemp seed oil, but CBD oil is different. Mm-hmm. Uh, hemp seed oil, in my experience, in my test, that you can actually get better or more benefits by using full strength. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Very cool.
cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Travis, yeah. for the wonderful information. Guys, make sure you check out Bella Crown. It's in Clinton, Maryland. If you want to pick up this product, and they can also order it online. Correct? Oh, cool. Yeah, of course. yeah, and order it online. And nationally in stores too. Oh, nationally, yeah, it's nationally, nationally yes, yeah. in stores as well with Neighbor Beauty Co-op. Yes. Right? right. Okay. All right. So thank you guys so much, and stay tuned for the next segment. Okay, neighbors, so if you follow me on Instagram, then you saw I recently had Senegalese twist in as a protective style. Uh, I rocked it for about a good month. That was long enough for me because I love to change my hair up. But today we're gonna be talking about another protective style, the spring twist. And we've seen this, I mean, it's been around for a long time. And who else can talk about this more than Travis? Yes, I mean, true he expert. developed the kinky twist. like. Yes. The originator, okay? Again, he was propositioned by Oprah, y'all. He's he's legendary. Yes. Touch him if you can. Maybe, you know, <laughs> yeah. some of that wealth. I need to get some kinkiness. Yeah. 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 Give me wealth. Yes. Kinky wealth. Kinky yes. <laughs> wealth. Kinky wealth. Yes. yes. For, for the, the culture. culture. Yes, for the culture. <laughs> so yeah. kinky wealth, okay? Yeah. But today we're going to be featuring Eon Hair in their spring twist. Look how fun that is. Bounce, I love girl. it. Bounce, yeah. yes. yes. Okay, this is how y'all need to be on the boat this summer. Yes. Okay. <laughs> With the While you're twerking. Yes. 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 <laughs> that is actually really an assistant for the twerk. Can you see that? Though? I can definitely see it. <laughs> yes. Okay, I so was on the plane ladies. with Dwayne. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you really Nikki? Yeah, I am. It's, 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 it's the vibe. Bob. Bob. <laughs> okay, Babiana. Babiana. <laughs> Babiana. Okay. Yes. So, Travis, please help us talk about the spring twist. I've heard it. Um, Passion twist and different names um, have been used, and I've always wanted to know what's the difference, but I guess there is really no difference. It's all the same, right? Yeah, actually, uh, um, in creativity work, I think uh, even with the same hair, if you do this, it comes out this way. If you do that, it comes out different. Mm -hmm. So actually, when it comes to you know, creative work, it's very subjective. So anybody can actually use the same material, same hair, and then if they create different thing, you know, they can call, call it differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I respect that, yeah. but but that's not the case. <laughs> okay. ah. That's what bothers me. This is a spring twist. Mm -hmm. um, I personally create this the spring twist back in year uh, 1999. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Babies. Uh -huh. We were. Yeah, we were. We were. We were. Whoa. So yeah. th this is a 20-year-old exactly. style. Right. Mm -hmm. This is the 20-year 20, 20 anniversary. Congratulations. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank Try you. better work. Yeah. Yeah. Give me some kinky yeah. wealth. Kinky wealth. Kinky wealth. But unfortunately, I, when I uh, create this, I wasn't really paying attention to uh, making money for with this but i did it because of like fun more like fun yeah and then also you know i wanted to make my store a little different than other beauty stores because mm -hmm. that's the first time when i enter into the beauty industry so mm -hmm. you know if i'm going to enter into the beauty industry i want to do something different yeah mm -hmm. uh so spring twist actually um this it, to me it has a lot of meanings because um this was a part of the natural movement uh, mm. That we did back in late nineties. Mm -hmm. So yes, for the culture. I I'm love it. Yes, yes. For the culture. Travis for the culture. So actually, um, it, this was not something that I wanted to make money off of, but rather than make a statement, mm -hmm. and then as well as the um, you know fulfilling the needs mm -hmm. of the time. So. I wasn't really eager to like expand the company to yeah. sell more of this hair, so I, I made it into exclusive, mm -hmm. so that the only, like I, I was targeting the professional, young professional woman yeah. with yeah. the spring twist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I didn't want to go up, go after nationwide, you know, campaigning or anything like that. So I try to target uh, the you know medical doctors, the you know, here in Washington D.C. we have a lot of. Um, you know, high-ranking government yeah. employees, yeah, yeah. Um, and who are young, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then we have like NASA nearby here. Yeah, so we have some mm -hmm. professional ladies there. So we target those professional women, mm -hmm. young African American women, 
And then, so I had a lot of medical doctors who used to come in and buy this hair, and mm -hmm. you know they were thankful that I didn't proliferate this like crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. so they, could, you know, they at least they have something. Yeah. That they mm -hmm. can they yeah. can pull themselves is theirs. So they really appreciated that. Yeah. And um, uh, so this was kept uh, very exclusive for a long twenty years. We wow. never went after the market or anything like that. Wow. But because of that. Mm -hmm. Because of the spring twist style is coming back again, it really is. strong. Yeah, yeah, it is. And then a lot of people are trying to imitate our product and then calling it different names. Yeah. And then you know, louder voice actually wins usually. Yeah. yeah. So since we don't, we are not voicing it, and then they are. Well, here's your chance. Yes. Yeah, so. Use your platform with Hey Neighbor. Say <laughs> what yes. you have to say to these people. Let them hear it loud. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Loud spring and clear. Twist. Yeah, exactly. It's spring twist. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, one question I had with this was when we first got the hair in. Um, Jenny, oh my shout out, hey girl. <laughs> Jenny and I were so confused because we were like, oh, we have hair that's sewn in. Like, mm -hmm. it has a whole weft and everything. Yeah. And it wasn't until I asked um, a couple of people, you and um, another person, that you actually, like, are supposed to cut the hair. Um, and you don't see a lot of other brands having this weft. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was just braiding hair. That yeah. you go in the hair store, you buy a pack of it, right. and then they braid it in like any other canacalon or whatever. Yeah. But this is, so can you sew this in as well? When I first uh, uh, made this hair, mm -hmm. um, we I tried to make the hair as such, just as a strand you know, like this, yeah. so that the, uh, when the customer actually receives it, uh, they can actually just stretch this, and then when they pull it, and then let go, then it pops out. Oh, right? it looks totally it looks different now. So, right. wow, okay. so that's what this is supposed to look. And then once you have this look, then uh, can you hold this for me? Absolutely. In the, in the middle? Okay. Middle? Yeah. And then, when, then we have the different uh, twist techniques that yeah. you can actually twist your between your finger, mm -hmm. like index finger and thumb, then twist and wrap. Uh, or you can just actually pull the stretch the hair and then wrap. Oh, no, Robert, are you getting this? Are you good to go? Okay. Make sure we got make sure we So, you know, when you actually do, you know, do this wrapping technique, then when you let go, then the the twist effect mm. happens, right? Yeah. yeah. So, this is the whole basic idea of this this twist. Mm -hmm. Then what happens is like your hair will get cut if mm -hmm. you like you, you you know, in regular Senegalese twist, you have to twist like yeah. Yeah. twist, right? Yeah. So, when you twist you really damage your cuticles. Yeah. Oh. That's when the hair breakage happens and all that other stuff. Yeah. And um, w by doing this, I, th I, I thought, you know, I thought it would, the reason why I developed this the wrapping technique is because then at least I don't have to pull any, you know, pull the hair, right? You don't mm. feel me f fully Not hair, at right? all. So actually there is no stretch or no, mm. no uh, stress to the hair, yeah. your hair. Yeah. That's blended into this hair. Mm. And then once you create it, that you let go, then you create this, yeah. Cute the little twist. ring spiral. Uh -huh. Well, I, me personally, kinky twist, I did have kinky twist once when I was a kid, right? And then uh, as I got older, I was like, oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do box braids or the kinky twist, maybe. I, I've only seen like African braiders wear them or something. So why do you think that this style is coming back and it's so popular now? Uh, this style, uh, actually, I have customers very, very, very dedi you know, dedicated, mm -hmm. faithful customers who stay with this style for like 20 years. They yeah. do, and that, that's yeah. what I've always it's seen like that. So it's like, I know the aunt yeah. that always has yes, it. That, yeah. so, so I'm like, always the aunt. Yeah. Always the aunt. Yeah. So I'm like, I would never get that because my auntie Valda, or whatever her <laughs> that's name is, that's her signature look. Right? Yes. Yes. We're not yes. stuck on any auntie's stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so I'm like, well, I'm gonna just go ahead and get the box braids and let auntie have that, yeah. you know? This style has very addictive uh, power. Mm. <laughs> so because it's fast. Yes. There's no tension. Yeah. And it, it wears so comfortable. Yeah. yeah. You know, although it looks very uh, fragile, you know, once you, you know, when longer you wear, actually more naturally. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I have a question to get the pattern um, when making this hair. It, are you, are they wrapping it with like a, like a, almost a straw kind of barrel to get that right. texture? Okay. Right. Right. Actually, uh, this one, this particular one, 
I use a five millimeter diameter rod okay. and then we wrap the hair onto it and then we have to bake this in the oven. Okay. Oh. In the big, uh, you know, big oven machine. Yeah. Right? Right. So we put it in there in certain degree of heat and then impose that heat for a certain length. Then okay. it conforms to this. But it's not easy to conform this. Uh, and a lot of factories, they are trying to like really butter me up to <laughs> release the techniques, mm, to how to it. create yeah. the, to uh, this spiral. Right. It's very difficult, even for the veterans, it's very difficult. I can tell, do. like it's still staying in the perfect spiral right. on my yeah. finger. Right. So <laughs> my question is, if someone wanted a longer look, I usually see Kiki yeah. twist in this mm -hmm. length. Mm -hmm. If they wanted a longer mm -hmm. length spring right. twist, how would they achieve that with this hair? Uh, first of all, I don't recommend it any longer uh, because, uh, but, but, and the, to answer your question directly, uh, yes, you can make it longer. Okay. Uh, but my suggestion is don't. Why not? Uh, because the, the, I calculate the weight of the hair, extension oh. hair, that you're supposed to have on your hair in order to avoid, or you know, in order for your follicle to feel stressed uh, and, and create mm -hmm. the traction alopecia. Yeah. So for the for the health reason, because you know, like I said, you know, we didn't start this to make money. Right. <laughs> yeah. If we were, we were, you know, really eager to make money with this hair, we would go nationwide and do the yeah. sales yeah. everywhere, right. yeah. just like every other hair does. And then we, on, even though we had to stay like uh, only at our store uh, exclusively, is because um, you know, I want to maintain that integrity of the hair. Yeah. yeah. And he's, so, he's such a good guy. Yeah, a good guy. So yeah. And it's then the thing is, the I will show you how to add length to it. Okay. This particular hair actually is. Do you need this one too? It's, it's like l literally, you know, about th you know, uh, two almost like two feet in yeah. length. Yeah. Yeah. But what okay, you do shrinkage. is, you actually <laughs> can oh, stretch. stretch it out. Oh. And feather this yeah, out, pull it, yeah. and oh, then okay. it, it, it gets longer. Yeah, so but does it maintain the yes, pattern after that? Yes, correct. Okay. It does. That's oh, the it does. It's, that's the beautiful thing about it. So actually, when you braid, <coughs> you braid with your one strand of your hair, mm -hmm. right? And then with these two strands, make yeah. a three three strand to to three the pl plait yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Like you know maybe three or four plaits. Yeah. And then, and then twist. twist. Right. Oh, okay. So you can actually do that. The second thing is, like, let's say we twisted it all the way here, and then all of a sudden you you want to have the length. Then what you do is you take uh, the piece of this hair, mm -hmm. uh, which is that, uh, mm -hmm. and then you add on to this two strands. Oh, that's smart. And then you continue twisting it. Then actually blends to extend even longer. So you wow. can so you can actually twist this as long as you oh, want. Okay. This yeah, okay. Wow, you, look at how cute your twist has turned into. Right, so, yeah. Yeah, so even for, for the first time, you actually yeah. achieved yeah. it, right? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna that go home great. and uh, try this actually. But I think we actually have like a professional video, right? We do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We do, yeah. my wow. favorite. All right, well, let's go right on to the video then. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Travis. Right. Thank you. Avoid the root tight. You can see my finger? Mm -hmm. Tight enough. So you played it like three or four times or? At least four times. That's two. This is three. Okay. And this is four. Okay. Got it four. Mm -hmm. And I separate the hair in the middle and go like this. Okay. And then all I do is like this. So what's the difference between the kinky twist, the way you do the kinky twist and the way you do the spring twist? The kinky twist, you have to wind the hair. With mm -hmm. spring twist, all you have to do is just cross the hair on top of each other gently while pulling. And if you don't want it too long, you can stop right here and then cut. Cut it, you cut it like not straight, like about 45 you, degree angle. Yeah, like that. Okay. And then there you go. You got your spring all fluffy and springy. In kinky twist, you have to wind it like this, and then cross the hair like this. 
Then you wind again and cross it like this. Wind it again and cross it like this until you get to the very end. That's how you do the kinky twist by winding. That's. But how do you do spring twist? To do the spring twist is this, is no winding at all. Okay. All you have to do is put the hair on top of each other each time like this. And you don't pull too much. No pulling. Just gently. Gently, gently. How do you get rid of the, the fuzziness at the, uh, near to the end? As you go down, it gets fuzzier, right? When I go down, yes, it does. Mm -hmm. But I, I clip that part. Okay. Like, do, you, do you use any, any product to control the fuzziness? Yeah, I use grease. Can you please show me? A little bit of grease on my finger, like mm -hmm. this. And then I go like this, and like this, to make it smooth. Does it have to be a grease, or does, can it be a gel? No, grease is better. Gel is only good when the hair is perm. Like and then you clip the ends, like all the way to the very end. See the difference? This will wind and this was twisted. And of course you clear it. That's beautiful. See the difference? It's winding and twisted. Neighbors, we have a new segment called Neighborhood Watch. Right? Is that what it's called? Yes. Okay, I'm going to do it again. All right. <laughs> hey, neighbors. So we are introducing a new segment called Neighborhood Watch, where we not only, you know, we like to give you guys the technical side of the beauty industry, but we also want to talk about some issues that are going on within the beauty industry as well. And we would love to get your opinion. But first, we're going to have a roundtable discussion. Now, recently... It, it, it's not super recent, but maybe what was it, a what year or two? Year, yeah, yeah. What, a year or two ago. Um, Shea Moisture sewed, sewed. <laughs> <laughs> they sold their company to a larger conglomerate. Um, and Shea Moisture was a black owned company. Um, we love buying black, supporting black businesses. However, they sold. And this is something that seems to be a common trend within the black community and black products once they you know really get a buzz and really start going and really start making some money and get a really good support system behind them they sell mm -hmm. so what are your opinions on this well it wasn't only Shea Moisture too it was um Sundial Brands okay which is the, the parent brand so Shea Moisture is underneath as well as um, Madam CJ Walker line mm -hmm. um Nyako line and um I think it's one more line underneath I can't think of the top of my head so it's the whole Sundial Brands which um Rich Lou Dennis started that sold to Unilever which is one of the biggest beauty conglomerates mm -hmm. um and yeah it's just We've had this talk, Travis and I, we have this talk about um, how black businesses, once they reach a certain um, amount of money or once they reach, I think, their highest, they sell to a bigger beauty brand. And um, while they might see that, uh, see it as like a better business move, I think kind of like it's, uh, well, what about the black community that was supporting you? You know, we wanted to, uh, I guess, hold down our own we want to you know reach up our own and this was the whole purpose of, of, of us being behind your back and then you sell it to like a bigger conglomerate that are technically not really about the people mm -hmm. they're about selling the product and pushing it out mm -hmm. you know their message is a little different than what it was before so are you really for us or are you you know kind of not for us mm -hmm. so he sold out kind of like out. I think he sold out, but technically it's like, well, did he really sell out? Because he also, in the moment of, you know, buy, of selling Sundown Brands, he brought Essence, Essence Magazine. Right. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's for his situation, it's kind of like, well, mm -mm, did he sell out? But we're seeing this trend in a lot of big beauty, uh, mm -hmm. big beauty businesses um, that are especially targeted towards the African-American community mm -hmm. that when they are, you know, reaching a million dollar business they're selling it to a bigger parent brand 
um, that could potentially end the business, keep it going, or compromise the ingredients that are even in you know uh, the products. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. Charles, what do you think? Well, uh, it's um, it's quite a difficult uh, issue. Yeah. Uh, especially for the beauty supply uh, operators such as myself. Mm -hmm. um, as a Korean American, it's very important for us to actually support the the African American brand. Um, we try not to enter into branding the products. It's not because we don't have the out, you know outlets to distribute the products, but it's because we try to respect and uh, to keep the integrity of the, the African American brand. Mm. When the a long time ago, in about I think it's almost like twenty some odd years ago, the the Revlon uh, made a public speech. Uh, and that angered so many African-American stylists. Uh, they said when Revlon actually enter into the African-American market, uh, they make an announcement saying that they will take over the industry in less than a few years mm -hmm. and then be predominantly uh, the, the major player in the, in the game. Mm -hmm. And then they just said that and then African-American stylists, they were pretty disappointed with the statement and uh, refusing the Revlon brand. Mm. So um, during that time, the the you know, ABAI, uh, American Her Health and Beauty AIDS Industry, I think, Association, um, ABAI was, was formed mm -hmm. and uh, the small logo was created called Proud Lady. And then we used to put that uh, Proud Lady logo on oh, the product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I remember yeah. seeing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the uh, African American consumers would look at the bottle, and then if they see the uh, the lady, you know, Proud Lady logo on it, yeah. then they support the product. Right. right. So that's how you know. That's when the uh, so many uh, African American owned brand actually really uh, became a major player mm -hmm. and and taking a significant significant part of the industry itself. Mm -hmm. But as um, <clears throat> soon as these companies, so the Korean Americans, you know, on the beauty supply stores, obviously we supported, we supported that, mm -hmm. and without, you know, without even a condition. Like for example, if they go to a big chain stores like, you know, CVS or you know, like whatever, or Green or whatever, they have mm -hmm. conditions. Yeah, right. Like if you supply the hair it product to us, you know, you, this is the condition you have to follow. This is the condition you have to follow, and all that other stuff. Right. And it really put a stress to these uh, manufacturers. Mm -hmm. But the Korean American owned beauty supply stores, in supporting, we didn't give them any condition whatsoever, conditionless. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we, will, we will purchase the product, we will distribute the product. If the customers complain about it, we will eat up the cost. Right. You know, for the brand company, so that was part of it. it's like unspoken, but you know, like yeah. heart to heart yeah. type of support that yeah. we gave. And then, you know, pretty soon, one by one, uh, as Revlon said, that you know they want to take over the industry. They mm -hmm. did. Now there is only like everybody sold sold themselves out. Like mm -hmm. Motions sold out, yeah. Soft Cushion sold out, Carson mm -hmm. sold out. You know, Ultra Shin sold out. Yeah. Uh, just name any anything. It's you know, then just name anything, mm. and uh, you know, I'm sure it's uh, one way or the other. It's been sold out to uh, the you know four or five conglomerates. Yeah. Mm. Like Unilever, Revlon, L'Oreal, um, and some other companies. I can't think of. Um, so these companies actually took over literally African American brand. Mm. And uh, when I'm when I'm looking at this brand, I feel kind of really sad because. Like we supposed, are we supposed to leave like heritage behind mm -hmm. to our next generation, so they yeah. actually our next generation can actually, uh, you know, prosper from from right. what we have built. Right. Exactly. It's, that was part of the thing that sort of like hurt my feeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I saw uh, Rich Liu Dennis, which is he's a really good guy. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. I really uh, admire uh, his personality uh, and uh, his achievement as well. Mm -hmm. But selling the company out, I mean, the sheer moisture brand itself, think about it, you know, like I see young, especially millennials, fall in love with that brand, had a strong, you know, proud, yeah. something sense of pride in yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. And, and then, you know, like this is something, it's not just Rich News brand anymore. It's like African-American millennials brand. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a community brand itself. Yeah. And selling that out, yeah. I mean, aren't you supposed to ask 
you know, your co-owners, which is the consumers? Right. Yeah. I guess, so there's a uh, documentary on PBS, um, and he was featured in the documentary, and he talked about his journey and mm -hmm. him uh, selling the company. Um, and it didn't go into a lot of detail, but I guess I would like to know if he completely sold the company or if he's now a minor minority owner right. of the company. So he still has a top position for the company, but yeah. he doesn't have like so he doesn't have the sole say on decision making. Mm -hmm. Right, and and, and for me, I don't. I guess it's such a sticky situation because, for instance, I have a an aunt who was a very successful businesswoman, and um, she's the one that actually taught me about entrepreneurship. And she said, "You get a company, you build it up, and you sell it." You know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and that gives you more buying power to do something else with that. And for him to buy Essence, I feel like it gave him more leverage and more. Um, of a capability to, to do more for the black community because it is a black magazine it is targeted towards the black audience and he can now um i don't know like maybe put us or give us more information through essence magazine that about something that would help the black community mm -hmm. so i i think it helped it expand but devil's Shame advocate sure. like how has essence magazine changed since he has you know, taking his position. It's still right. they're still doing the same things, publishing the same things, still doing the essence what Fest. Essence Fest. Yeah. yeah. Well it, Essence Fest is what has saved them. So yeah. it'd be interesting to see how the festival itself expands because the magazine itself, you're right, is the same. And they're yeah. digital now yeah. too. They're yeah. not, exactly. it's not even a, a magazine yeah. anymore. Right. right. And they have the podcast, I know. Yeah, but they do. I, I my major concern is the quality of the shame moisture. It products, the quality has you know? changed. Um, because at the end of the day, I agree with your aunt. I've heard this notion before about selling for for buying larger buying power mm -hmm. and a little bit more leverage in the black community in general. Um, but what I loved about Shea Moisture was the quality of the product. Mm -hmm. And if it's being watered down or diluted in any way to sell more mm -hmm. um, and to have all of these new programming that they're doing monthly, that's the part that concerns me the most is mm -hmm. the quality of the product. And particularly, you know, Rich Alou's story is so beautiful that he was out on the street. On the street Harlem corner, yes. And going back to his apartment and making Leaking, the products. Yeah. That yeah. is so beautiful and made me want to support it. And so now that it's this big business with products that are not necessarily as great for the African for African American hair is what concerns me yeah. most. Yeah, but this is such a great discussion. Thank you all so much for your wonderful insight. I don't really, I'm so on the fence, but it yeah. was so, such an intriguing conversation. If you all enjoy the conversation, or if you have your own opinion about it, definitely let us know. What do you think? Did he sell out? Um, is Shea Moisture for us anymore? Who knows? But definitely stay tuned for the next segment. Hold on, are we recording this? Look at it. Give it, 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 give Giveaway time, hey. giveaway time, giveaway time, vocals. Giveaway time, hey, giveaway time, giveaway time, it's giveaway time, it's giveaway time. It's giveaway time. Hey. Bobby Yana and Slippy Nippy coming through. We got a giveaway and we want to give it to you. <laughs> Okay, neighbors, so you know we have to keep you up on trend. And it is summer 2019, yes. and the fellas are out, okay? They know about our secrets. They know that we love the weaves and the extensions mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And they but don't care as long as we look good. As long as we look good and we make it look flawless, yes. okay? So yes. this summer 2019 trend is the invisible ponytail. Mm -hmm. We've seen it, you know, a lot. And there's different ways to do it. So we wanted to kind of get into a little bit more detail for you guys so you can stay on trend and slay okay and i see you have a little ponytail look going on today oh, i'm so happy you noticed I yes i do i'm rocking the bangin pony by vivica a fox mm -hmm. and 
Yes, it's banging, I know. You don't have to, you know, size me too much. Oh. But it's also I, bang. I was going to do that. <laughs> I was going to do that, but okay. Thank you, thank you. Um, but yes, it's the bang and pony, and I absolutely love it. But I'm really interested in getting into this invisible pony. Yes. Because I need some extra looks for yes. the summer. So it's also called an inside ponytail, and this is because your natural hair is wrapped underneath the bundles it's inside of the bundles literally oh, okay so it's like a protective yes style. it's a, like a protective style it can last up to two to three weeks if you really take care of it okay so no sweating no having too much fun on the boat okay <laughs> um make sure you keep your edges laid it can last up to two to three weeks and it's really great for ladies with thinner hair um or if you just want some added length you know, it's nice, it's sleek. You can wear it many different ways. Um, some people add like braids to the top, maybe some accessories to the top of mm, their hair. Yes. Um, you can also uh, put it in a bun if you want to. It, it's just so versatile, it's so sleek, it's so easy to do, okay? okay. So if you have not seen any videos on how to do it, I have a couple of tips to do it, okay? Please, I'm ready. So ladies, to get your Banging pony, not literally, okay, but a nice sleek banging pony that you can wear to any event, casual, dressed up, sexy, sleek. All you gotta do is, one, make sure the hair is laid, okay? okay? So you take your natural hair, get it laid in the ponytail, make sure it's nice and sleek. Get your, get some baby hairs going on if you wanna do that, you know what I'm saying? Or if you wanna be a grown woman, just get them grown hair, grown woman edges going on, you know? Um, I <laughs> then, love it, I love Then it. you're gonna braid down your natural hair, Okay, and there's different ways to attach the bundles. And these are Eon bundles, they're super, they're super quality bundles. Mm. Um, but you're gonna take a bundle, let's see if I have a loose bundle. Here, okay, can I take this off, boss? Okay, <laughs> she said I could. Yeah. Um, I just got my nails done though, so I have to be careful. Yeah, but yes. it's also great because now that everyone can see the close up of those great nails Thank you. on the bundle. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So she also has a hand model. For yes. Those I don't know. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so you're gonna take you're gonna take the bundle, okay? okay? And at the you're gonna start at the end of the braid. And there's different ways to attach it. There was a YouTuber who actually attached it. She used doobie wrap. Okay. Not the way. Not the way. Yes, but the actual wrapping paper. When you would get the old know. school wraps. Y'all know the old school wraps, okay? Yes, Get yes. the old school wrap. And she actually wrapped it around the braid and then glued it around. What I've done before is I've actually taken the bundle and I start at the bottom, I wrap it around, put a pin wrap it around, put a pen all the way up until I get to the top. And sense. then I take the end of the bundle and just wrap it around like that and make it look really natural. Okay, and so then, you take the hair itself. Yeah, let okay. me let me uh, try and do it on your, uh, on your banging on pony. On my banging pony. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so say this, or, this is braided, okay? We're gonna start at the bottom, wrap, put a pen, put some glue, whatever you're gonna use to attach. All the way up. Okay, look at you. I'm in love all Yes, now you're a double banging pony. Okay. <laughs> and we're gonna wrap it. Y'all, don't don't talk about my rap skills, okay? Because Bobby, y'all, we're trying to do a, a quick it segment is, for you guys. So we're gonna cookie. wrap <laughs> all yes. the way to the top. And then you're gonna take the rest of the hair here. This is a terrible, a terrible job. It's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to show y'all a real life bang yes. pony. Just, you know, follow me on Instagram to show day online if you are not, so you can see a real bang pony. So you're gonna wrap that part around at the end. It makes it look really natural and blends seamlessly with your ponytail. And then what happens to the braid? <laughs> what if I left this at the end? <laughs> look, look, this is really a different show and I love it. So what were you asking? I'm sorry. Yeah, but okay. So like, what happens to the braid? Because someone like me and you with mm -hmm. a lot of hair, mm -hmm. my concern is what? Where is that braid that we use to wrap it around? It is underneath the hair, and it just stays there. It's it fine. It just stays there. It's oh, fine, okay. Though. Oh, we don't have to tuck her or anything. No. Okay. Yeah. I love this. Yes. So, ladies. <laughs> Stay up on trend with you banging Tony <laughs> yes. in summer 2019, okay? Make sure you continue to slay. It's sleek, like I said, you can wear it many different ways and it's super on trend and who doesn't want to be on trend, okay? Yes. All right, and we're gonna close the show. Let me take, let me take this off. <laughs> I'm sorry, thank girl. You. Let me let me get you together since you're leaving and you gotta go slay. Thank you, thank you, darling. Yes, all right. I but thank it. you, Miss Mimi, for joining us again. Uh -huh. You're always so wonderful. Much fun. Yes, thank you. You're again. always wonderful. Thank you to Bella Crown for supplying this wonderful wig for me. Okay, I feel. Girl, you were on top of the world. You were truly. I, I'm on trend right now. You are on trend, and Neon, you look like a queen. Bob, 
bang, yes. bang in. Okay, I'm, I'm doing all of that today. So yes. thank you, Bella Crown, for supplying this wig. Thank you to Vivica for supplying her banging pony. Yes. Thank you to um, Second Nature. They always supply like really great products. Um, the bentonite clay mask, yes. the hemp seed oil. Ugh. Get that hemp seed oil, y'all. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much to our talented and our super knowledgeable uh, guests for coming in, Nicole, Travis, Raviana, thank you, girl, for always showing up, showing Ray out, looks looking out good. Every she's she's time. definitely on trends. Stays on trends. Always. And thank you to you all again for tuning in to episode seven of Hey Neighbor. Bye.